Hello, everyone, and welcome to this podcast. I hope everyone's doing well. In this podcast, we're going to talk about how we map genes in bacteria using bacterial conjugation. As we go through this, we're going to review some terms that are important to understand in microbiology, as well as terms important to understand as we move forward with genetics. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get started with this topic of gene mapping using bacterial conjugation. Now usually when scientists map genes using bacterial conjugation, they don't know the order of the genes. But for this exercise, we're going to start with a known order of genes in this particular bacterial strain. That will be easier as we're learning some of these concepts. Later on, you may need to go back and look at raw data and be able to figure out how to map the gene. So we're going to just start with the known order of these genes in this particular bacterial strain. The first one is Lu, standing for leucine biosynthesis. The next gene is biotin, or bio, and that stands for biotin synthesis, which is a vitamin that bacteria need. And the next gene in this sequence will be threonine, or THR, and this is important in making the amino acid threonine. In doing these experiments, we're going to work with two different strains. The first one is a strain that we call HFR, which stands for high frequency of recombination. The other strain we're gonna work with is called F minus. I encourage you to look at previous podcasts or in your textbook to review the nature of these strains. And we'll talk a little bit about it as as we move, move forward here. The HFR strain in this experiment will be Lu plus, Bio plus, threonine plus. It will also have another gene that we'll just refer to as strep S, which means that this HFR strain is sensitive to the amino acid streptomycin, meaning it cannot survive in the presence of streptomycin. The F minus strain will be Lu minus, Bio minus, threonine minus, and it will be strep R, meaning streptomycin resistant. Now let's just review one term here, a couple terms here. Since this strain is Lu plus, Bio plus, and threonine plus, that means that the HFR strain can make its own leucine, its own biotin, and its own threonine. So we would say that this strain is prototrophic for those nutrients. And since this strain is Lu minus, Bio minus, and threonine minus, we would say that it is oxytrophic for these nutrients meaning that it cannot make these various nutrients. And we're going to take advantage of that as we map these genes. To explain this, I'm going to use a few pieces of of yarn to demonstrate what the chromosomes would look like. Okay, so over here on the right, the blue chromosome here, that's our HFR strain. And over here is our F minus strain. F minus simply means that this bacterial cell, and I guess we can draw the cell wall around it, just maybe that will help a little here. The F minus strain does not have the fertility factor, so it cannot form the sex pillus to commit to conjugation. However, the HFR strain, it does not contain the F factor as a plasmid, but by definition, the HFR strain has this fertility factor incorporated into the chromosome. Now to be consistent, we have to remember that this chromosome is double-stranded. So I'm going to place another strand of of DNA or our yarn inside of the other one here. It's not shown, but these would be double helices, but that would be a bit complicated, I think, as we move forward. So you'll just have to remember that even though it's not exactly shown that way, these are double helices. Okay, so for right now, these two strains, the F- and the HFR, they are not interacting with each other. They're in separate flasks. However, they're separated. For our purposes, we're just going to draw kind of a wall here. And what I want us to do is think about what kind of media these will grow on and what kind of media they will not grow on. So let's write some media down here. I'm going to write CM. That stands for complete media. Complete media contains all the nutrients a bacterial cell might need. Next, I'm going to put complete medium plus streptomycin. We'll put minimal media down here as well. And then we're going to have complete medium minus leucine. 
meaning the only cells that could grow on this media would be cells that could make their own leucine, because this media has everything except leucine. Then we're going to take complete media, and we're going to remove the leucine, and we're going to remove the biotin. Only cells that can grow on this media would be those cells that can make leucine and biotin. Okay, now let's go with complete media, minus leucine, minus biotin, and minus threonine. The only cells that can grow on this would be cells that could make their own leucine, biotin, and threonine. We know that in com on complete medium, both of these cells will grow because complete medium has everything they need. Now complete medium plus streptomycin, we know that the F minus cell will grow because it has all the medium in it, plus it has the streptomycin resistance gene on it. So it can survive in the presence of streptomycin. However, the HFR strain cannot. Minimal media. This F minus strain can't because it can't make all of these nutrients, so it would not survive. However, this strain could. It's going to be the same for the next three here because this strain cannot make leucine, biotin, or threonine. So let's go ahead and put minuses here for these three strains. I mean, three sets of media, I should say. Over here, it could because this strain can make its own leucine, biotin, and threonine. Now keep in mind, if we added streptomycin to any of these media here, none of them would grow because this does not have the streptomycin resistance gene. It is sensitive to streptomycin. Now, in order to make this F minus strain capable of growing without leucine or biotin or threonine in the media, it has to acquire those genes. They're gonna acquire those genes from this HFR strain. So let's talk about that next. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to allow these two cells to interact with each other and allow for conjugation to occur. And so let's remove our fictitious wall here. Now this cell here, this HFR strain, remember it has this fertility factor. So it's going to be able to make that sex pillus. And so we can just draw that like so here, showing this now open channel between these two cytoplasms. I'm going to go ahead and fill in these dots here. I'm not sure why I made them dashed. All right, so the sex pillus has formed. And now what happens is, if, if you remember earlier on when we talked about DNA replication, we said that when DNA replicates, it forms a bidirectional replication fork here where replication occurs in both directions. When conjugation occurs here and, and we're going to have genes flowing between the two cells, only unidirectional replication occurs. And so what happens here is we're going to break this DNA like so. Now remember this inner strand of DNA, it doesn't break. And so what happens is as the sex pillus forms and the DNA breaks, this strand of DNA will feed its way through the sex pillus. Isn't that magical, right? Now, if you allow conjugation to continue long enough, what we would see is that this whole strand would move its way into the F minus strain. But when we map a gene, what we're going to do is we're going to break the sex pillus. And the way the original investigators did this is they just put it into an old fashioned blender and spun it and it broke the sex pillus. Now, when it breaks the sex pillus, the only only the genes that had already made it across are going to remain here. Everything else doesn't. And so for this argument, we're going to do three time points. I'm just going to draw them right here. Five minutes, 10 minutes, and 15 minutes. Uh, we should do zero minutes too, right? You have to know what you started off with. Okay, so now remember, at each of these time points, in the 5, 10, and 15 minutes when we break the sex pillus, we want to know which genes transferred. And so to do that, we're going to plate them on a variety of media at each of these time points. We're going to plate them on complete media plus streptomycin, complete media minus leucine plus streptomycin, complete media without leucine and without biotin plus streptomycin. And then we'll also plate them on C complete media without leucine, without biotin, without threonine plus streptomycin. Now it's important to remember why we always add streptomycin in the media. 
And that's because after conjugation occurs, let's just pretend this whole strand goes in here, all right? And we'll talk about later what happens when it's in there. But over here, this strand just doesn't go away. It's gonna finish replication and it's gonna synthesize a new strand of DNA around it. And so we can just put our old one right back over here, right? And so it hasn't lost anything. This strand here would grow on any media because it's fully prototrophic if it didn't have streptomycin in it. And we wanna make sure when we're analyzing which genes move across this sex pillus, we wanna make sure we're only looking at F minus cells because only F minus cells that have, can, that have taken up some of these genes will grow on this media. So if streptomycin was not in the media, then this cell would grow and that would make it impossible to interpret our results. So remember, very important to keep streptomycin in it so this cell dies and the only cell that survives is the F minus cell plus any genes that came over with it. So let's think about at zero minutes. So before the sex pillus has formed. Let's go ahead and put those data in here now. Before conjugation occurs, the HFR strain over here, it will not grow in any of these because of the streptomycin sensitivity it has. If it didn't have streptomycin in it, it would grow on all of those conditions. Over here, complete media with strep, the F minus strain would grow because it's providing all the nutrients it needs and with streptomycin in here it survives because it's streptomycin sensitive. Now the rest of these media here it will not grow on. Even though it's resistant to streptomycin before any genes have transferred over it cannot make leucine, it cannot make, cannot make biotin and it cannot make threonine so therefore it will not survive on these media. Now let's see what happens after conjugation starts. So again, let's, let's make sure this is clear. What I'm looking at here, this was zero minutes. Now let's redraw the sex pillus. And we've taken care of our zero minute time point, so we can mark that off. And again, remember this is gonna break here. Unidirectional replication is occurring. And the F plus comes over here. And at the five minute time point, what'll happen is we'll put this conjugate, these conjugating cells in the blender. It'll break the sex pillus and it will also break the DNA. So let's just cut that. And this will come over here, and this will remain over here. So let's go ahead and break the sex pillus. Now what happens in this HFR strain is that this single strand here just goes away, it degrades. And then this strand that's remaining, it will reform the double strands that we talked about before with all the genes. Okay, so now let's focus what's happening over here in F minus cell. Remember, HFR strain will be dead because it's streptomycin sensitive. Over here though, what happens is this Lu plus integrates with this strain here. This actual piece of DNA that transferred over will recombine into the F minus chromosome. The F plus doesn't because not the whole thing came over, so there's no way it can recombine. It'll eventually just um, be lost and degraded. But the Lu plus, because it has sequence similarity, which we call homology with the F minus strain, it will physically recombine inside of the F minus chromosome, and it'll look something like that. So with that said, after five minutes with only the Lu gene getting through, it'll still grow on C complete media with streptomycin. But now, because remember at zero minutes, it didn't grow on this media, but now it will grow on it because it has all the nutrients in it except leucine, but now it can make its own leucine. And it survives because it's streptomycin resistance. Now, since only this one gene came over from the HFR strain, it still can't grow on these bottom two media. Because in order to grow on these, biotin gene or threonine gene, or both, would have to move over to this cell. And that just didn't happen. So that's at five minutes. And remember, over here, this is going to remain minus, 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 minus throughout every time point because the streptomycin always kills this. Sad, but true. All right, now let's redo this experiment and it's gonna be set up the exact same way with the same genes and F minus strain will stay the same as well. But when we allow conjugation to start, we're gonna allow conjugation, conjugation to go for 10 minutes. And so the same phenomenon will happen. This piece of DNA will separate. It will then filter through this sex pillus 
again in a very magical and wonderful way. This time, since we're letting it go for 10 minutes, the Lu gene comes over, and so does the biotin gene. And then at the 10 minute mark, we rudely put it inside of the blender and we break conjugation. And now this whole piece of DNA will come over here. Again, just as we saw before, this will fall off the remaining portion of the, this strand of DNA and it will be degraded and we'll lose it. And just like we've seen before, it will reform the double strand. Again, we broke the sex pillus here. The cells reformed this completed replication. And then when we plate it on these media with streptomycin in it, it will die. And so it will not interfere with our ability to interpret these data over here. So at the 10 minute mark, let's see which media it will now grow on. Again, remember what happens here. Through recombination, the leucine and the biotin genes will recombine with the F minus chromosomal DNA, making this cell capable of making leucine and biotin. It will be prototrophic now for leucine and biotin. So it will still grow here on the complete media with streptomycin as we saw for the zero and five minutes. It will continue to grow on the media, the complete media without leucine and streptomycin as we saw with the five minute mark. But now it will grow on a new set of media that it didn't before. It will grow on media, complete media, lacking leucine and lacking biotin with streptomycin. And again, it can do that because it is now capable of making its own leucine and its own biotin. However, it still can't grow on this media, complete media without leucine, biotin, or threonine because it didn't have enough time to get that threonine gene over here. But at this point, if we didn't know the order of the genes, we could safely conclude leucine and biotin are next to each other. So why don't we just put that up here? After the five minute mark, we know leucine and biotin are next to each other because those were the first two genes to come over. Now, let's do this experiment one more time. All right, so once again, we'll set up this experiment the same way that we did before, which are with our HFR strain with this genotype, fully prototrophic, and the F minus strain, fully oxytrophic. We did the 10 minute already, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to allow them to conjugate again. And again, what will happen is that this DNA will begin to replicate in a unidirection. And when it does that, this strand, as we've seen before, will filter its way through the sex pillus. But this time we're letting it go for a full 15 minutes. And so that's enough time to get the leucine, the biotin, and the tryptophan across before we interrupt it by throwing it in the blender, breaking the sex pillus, allowing this piece to be degraded, and then a new piece of DNA to make a double helical again will form. As before, because we're gonna plate it on media with streptomycin, it won't grow, it'll die. So now, only this F minus strain will grow. And just like we saw before, what'll happen is the leucine and the biotin and the threonine will all recombine with the F minus chromosome. Now, because all three of these genes recombine, this F minus cell can make its own leucine, it can make its own biotin, and it can make its own tryptophan. And so as we saw before, it will continue to grow in the first three sets of media for the exact same reasons we described before, but now it can grow in this final medium because we allowed enough time for threonine to get over. I just realized I put tryptophan, but that is supposed to be threonine. So that should have said threonine and I just rewrote it there so we're not confused later on. Okay, so let me restate that again. Leucine, biotin, and threonine recombined, so now it can grow on this medium. And now we can conclude that the next gene that comes across, and so it's gonna be next to the biotin gene, is going to be threonine. Now, in a real experiment, we wouldn't really know the order of the genes, but you would map it out this exact same way. By, by allowing conjugation to occur at different time intervals, and then plating it on different media. In a real experiment, you wouldn't just do these, you would have several other nutritional markers that you would wanna follow because you're trying to map the entire bacterial genome here. But this is a nice way to introduce this concept by just looking at these three genes. I hope this was helpful in explaining how genes are mapped in bacteria using conjugation. If you have any questions at all as you're going over this material, please make sure you come see me. If not, I will see you in class.